Right, at the end of the last video, I said that we'd be talking about procedural noise right now, but uh, I'm going to do one other thing before we get to that step, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can take the creases in between a lot of these forms that we've made and make them really sharp. Uh, so to do this, we're going to have to convert this object from a voxel surface, or from a voxel object to a surface object, and you can do that just by clicking the V right here. Give it a few seconds. And this will, you'll see it changes to an S. That means it has been converted into a surface object. So what that means is that when we sculpt, the topology will not change um, to respect the new volume that the object occupies. So if I just start drawing, a little too strong there, you'll see the uh, polygons become very stretched. Now the reason why we're doing this is because we need, we're going to be using a very specific tool. So if you look in your surface tools, you go down, there's a tool towards the bottom called Angulator. Click on that, and the way this tool works is that it just, it, you'll make a selection area like this, and then if you hit enter, it will pull the polygons inside of that selection towards each other. So you'll see now that area is very sharp. So I'll just... Hold on. Now to make this selection a little bit easier, I'm going to turn on Steady Stroke up here so that your stroke will be a little smoother. So if I draw along here, hit Enter, and then if I hit Control D to deselect that region, then you see we now get a very sharp crease right there. So. Just do this anywhere you think you might need a sharp, sharp corner. So I'll go like right there. Now this tool tends to work better on concave surfaces rather than convex surfaces. So if I go up, say like right here towards this uh, convex corner, then it it does it does work, but it can tend to give you a little bit more of a lip than what you were probably bargaining for. So it tends to be more effective on concave surfaces like this. So you see, just going around, I can make this one a little bit larger. Hit enter. And now we get a very sharp, sharp crease right there. Really help to make this feel like it's several rocks laying directly on top of each other. As opposed to one form that just has a lot of bumps sculpted into it. So again, like right here would be a good spot. And like down in here. Right in there. And that's really all there is to this tool. So this is so this is one of the last things we'll we will uh, do. So I'm going to again. This is pretty much all I'm. Whoops, drew a little too far there. So I'm just going to undo. Try again. Now you want to make sure you're not covering too large of an area when you do this. If I cover up like this whole region then we get some really odd results. So you just want to make sure you're only painting in the actual crevices and corners. So like right here I might just paint that area. And hopefully you can see there what I'm talking about with this uh, kind of a lip so then you can go in and with your surface tools you can use chisel. So it's not called scrape anymore it's called chisel and you can start to chisel that away and you see what we end up with is a very sharp corner. Right, so I'm going to continue doing this and I'm going to fast forward a little bit to when we will use the noise. Okay, so once you've sharpened all of your creases and you've scraped away some of the rounder bits, now it is time to add in uh, some surface detail. 
So the quickest way to do the first pass of this is going to be with some procedural noise. And the way that works is that if in our surface mode, we go all the way down to adjust, we can go to noise right here. And what this will do is it will apply noisy details to the entire surface. So if I click on that, then you can see the kind of surface detailing that we're getting. So I already have a noise profile curve uh, set up here from the last time that I'd made a rock asset. So I'm just going to redo that process with you just so you can see what it's all about. So let me just delete these curve points. Just set this back to, I believe it's defaults to 0.5. All right, so here is some, how you make the noise work for you in order to get some really good rocky textures. So what I'm going to do is, the first thing we want to play with is the characteristic size. Now as I make this smaller, you can see that the uh, surface detail gets very repetitive and just looks like a series of small bumps. It doesn't really look like a rock. So we want to increase that characteristic size in order to get a bit more variety. So if we increase it, I typically... Oh, a little too big now. Everything's a bit too soft. I usually have it somewhere between 50 and 100. Let's just try 100. All right, that's actually looking pretty good. Now the next thing we might want to play with is the, the displacement degree. So this is just how far the uh, the noise is going to push the vertices. So as you see, this is significantly too much. So if I just bring that to one. Now you can also have this be a negative number. So if I go in with say negative one, and you see that's a little, that's too strong. So I'm going to make it negative 0.5 maybe. Negative 0.5. Alright. So that degree, maybe a little bit more, like negative 0.75. There we go. So now we want to make this surface detail even more varied. And that's going to happen with the uh, profile curve here. Now it's a little hard to explain how this works, but basically what it means is that the noise has low values and high values, and what we're doing is we're rescaling what those low values mean. So if we wanted, say, the areas right now where it's really pushed in to actually be going up, then we could increase the profile curve so that it's higher in the low values, and then maybe decrease it down here a bit. And you see what this starts to get us, especially right here. We have this little notch at the beginning, and that is reflected in the noise. So we have all these small bumps around. Now that's not what I want, so I'm going to play around with this a little bit. Now you can also change the interpolation of these points if you just right click on the point. So you can make it a sharp corner like that might have this, see if I make it go down. Maybe right click that one as well. Alright, this is looking like good distribution, but it's in the wrong direction. I think if I invert this to just be 7.5. Whoa, whoops! 0. 0.75. Hmm. Let me increase the characteristic size a bit, 110 maybe, and decrease the displacement degree to 0 0.6. Alright, that's actually looking fairly interesting. Might actually go in here and say, bring in another point, just so it's a little bit more jagged. Maybe make this a little 
Harsh. Oh, that's a bit too harsh. I'll bring it the other way. A little bit less. Whoa. Too much. Yeah, you can see how slow my computer is running right now. When I'm trying to move that. Okay, so I didn't really like that. I'm just going to delete that point. I think I might actually, though, try this and then right click that. And as I said, you do kind of just have to experiment with this. Maybe play with the displacement degree a little bit. Let's go back into the negatives. Looks kind of the same. So let's make that 0 0.5. Whoops. I hit 5 there without um, actually typing in the box. Maybe a little less. 0 0.4. Okay, I'm willing to work with that. So that's a quick way to add a lot of surface detail. Now in the next video we're going to go in a little bit more manually. We're going to use a lot of brush alphas and a lot of stencils in order to really start to carve some detail work into this and getting it looking very rock-like.